Hello crafty friends and welcome to another clean and simple card making video. If you've been around my channel for any length of time you know I like to cut my own little circle embellishments using a variety of dies with different size circles, regular circles and sort of wobbly circles, circles in different sizes and I keep them all to use them on my projects. I've got different types, gold, gold glitter, what's this one, silver foil, rose gold. And when I make these little circles, I'm always left with lots of remnants. So today I'm going to make some cards using these. So hopefully someone near me has just started mowing their lawn, so I'm going to switch to voiceover in a minute. But I thought I'd show you these. Now these I cut with this die and these are absolutely perfect as they are for going on a card. So I'm going to set those to one side, but these I'm going to die cut some shapes from and use them on a card front. While it's quiet, I'll just show you this. I've got this banner die and I'm going to pop it on here. But what I want to do to make the shape make sense when it's cut out, I want this point, this point and this point to fall somewhere where there is a solid piece of card. So not on a hole. And that way it will look like a banner, even though it's sort of like Swiss cheese. Similarly with this tag, I'm going to line it up so the hole in the tag matches one of the holes in the background here and all the points there and there and there and there and there and there are on solid bits of cardstock. The next thing I'm going to do is take some white paper scraps and with some of them I'm going to cut out the next size up in the nesting dies to mount my shapes on. For the shapes that didn't have larger size dies I simply mounted them with glue onto a piece of smooth white cardstock and then trimmed them out with my trimmer to give them a little white border. To make the non die cut pieces look as if they'd been die cut, I beveled the edges by running an embossing tool around the sides of the white mat. So the lawn mowing appears to have stopped for now, so hopefully I'll be able to talk. I've got six pieces here, I haven't used all of my remnants, I'll save some for another day. So I was thinking about simply putting these on the card as they are right now. And that would make the cards really clean and simple, even with a bit more embellishment. But I'm thinking, I've got this splatter stamp, and I might just like to have a little bit of splatter peeking out from behind each thing. I don't want anything too bright or too bold, so I've got Victorian velvet and my splatter stamp. And what I'm going to do is hover that there, take that out, give it a few seconds to transfer. I think that's good enough. And then again, move that out of the way. So it's just got a little bit of something in the background. Right, I'm going to do that to all of them. So now that's done, I'm happy with that. I'm just going to go ahead and stick these onto the front of my cards. 
So now we've got six foundations for focal points. Normally I use gold as an accent, something that I put in a focal point, but this time I've used metallics and golds as the focal point or the foundation. So I need to put something different on top. To colour my paper, I'm going to smush on the Victorian velvet. So I've got my grip mat here and two scraps of white paper. I'm going to add some water to turn that into a paint and then smush it on. And now I'm going to dry that with my hairdryer. So that's mostly dry. I'm going to use up the rest of this paint to smush on a second layer and dry that. I picked some focal images, as it were, and I want to give them something else to sit on to separate them from the front and the back. So I've got this whoops, label die, and I'm going to cut that from white card. Now here are my splotchy backgrounds. I'm going to run these through my cuttle bug because I can do that in just two passes rather than chopping it up and putting it through my mini Gemini. I'm not sure what I'm going to cut these leaves from yet. They're to go with the flowers, but I don't want them the same colour as the flowers. And that I'm going to cut from vellum. That goes behind this butterfly here. Just hold all these in place with some sticky notes. To give my shapes a bit of definition, I want to gild them with some gilding wax, but I want to test it first to make sure it looks gold. Sometimes when you put gold gilding wax on lighter colours, you don't see the gold, it just looks mucky. But I think that looks okay. But I've got a rose gold bit of paper here, for my rose gold heart. So I'm just gonna test the rose gold gilding wax. I think that works. Now, which one shall I do rose gold? That one. Just gonna sit that on there. Get some rose gold on my finger, blend it off a bit so I don't go in too heavy and just dust over the die cut. And I'll just catch the edges and give it a bit of depth and dimension and a bit of glimmer and shine. Right, I'm going to use this gold on the rest. So this flower, large flower here, needs to be assembled. And I'll do that simply by adding a bit of glue in the middle and turning them, turning each layer so they're offset from the one below. We'll leave that to one side now. The butterfly and this leaf need their bits poking out and vellum layering on the back so we'll do that. So I'm ready to assemble now. I want this here, but it's a little bit too long, but what I can do is shorten it by simply shuffling the die cut in the die and trapping that end, no, not that end, <laughs> and trapping the end that I want to chop in between the two plates, get them lined up. So now I've got same kind of tag but it's a lot shorter and doesn't cover up so much of my heart. Pop that on there, about there and I think the quickest way of adding glue to all these delicate die cuts will be to just daub it on the back with my sponge dauber and then press things down with some non-stick deli paper. I think that looks good on there. I'm quite happy with the size of the banner and this is leaning towards this splurge up here. So I think we'll do that. So I'm just trying to decide what to put where. That might look quite nice on there. 
that would look good on there. Butterfly or a flower. Flower on this big banner here and the butterfly there. I'm going to leave this one for a minute because I want to think about that a bit more. Another way of shortening die cuts like this is to snip off the two ends, glue them where you want them, say about here, and then hide the seam or the join behind a die cut. And there you would never know that that wasn't one solid piece. I think I want to trim this one down and I can't really hide the join so I'm going to trim it again like this. I will take a little bit out of this banner and hide the seam behind the flower. I'm just going to bend these petals up and back a bit to give them some dimension. And add some glue to the back there and that's going to go over the seam and for the leaves I think I'm going to do vellum so I'm going to cut those out so I've got four of these I'm just going to dip the end into glue because they don't need to be glued down all the way we want a smaller one there it's two big ones I think the small one will look Nice, just peeking out. Yeah, that's better. So this one hasn't got any gold on it. I'm going to take some of my gold circles and give that a gold flower centre. And to give it a bit of dimension, I'm going to cover it in crystal glaze. Oops, I <laughs> came out in a bit of a splurge. That will dry clear. Let's take a little bit off, I think, and let it um, do its thing. There we go, that'll do. Okay, that's fine. And then... I'm just going to get some other little circles and dot them around, around the flower, I think. So I'm going to give my butterfly a body in Morning Dew Crystal Drops, just to give it a bit of dimension there. And I think all these cards need now is a sentiment. And because I've got this label shape here, I think I'm going to use my Runji label sentiment stamps. Right, I have actually lost a little bit of footage. I think my phone might have overheated while I was filming earlier today because it's quite hot here. And I lost the bit where I did the stamping and heat embossing of the sentiments. But you've seen me do that a million times. All I did was stamp some of these sentiments on a bit of smooth white cardstock in Victorian velvet and then I dipped them in clear embossing powder and heated them with my heat tool and cut them out with my scissors. So for this card I just stuck a get well soon message on there, snuggled it in by the butterfly For this card I added a thank you sentiment and again snuggled it in by the flower this card with the heart I added a with love I always like to put hearts and love sentiments together this has become a just for you card and for some of the sentiments I did need to put a couple of layers of card behind one end or the other to stop them flapping about because over here you've got one, two, three, four layers of cardstock between this end and the card blank. So I needed to put some more under this end. This is now a good luck card. So I just pop that over the leaves. It seemed to sit nicely here because we've got this diagonal going on.
And this is the last one, the landscape card. I just popped a thinking of you over the leaf. And that's it. That's these cards finished, made with some of the remnants from my little circles. I hope you found the video helpful and it's given you some ideas of things you can do with your white paper scraps and remnants of things that you've got lying around in your stash. If it has, please do let me know in the comments, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.